Hey class, welcome back. I hope you guys are all doing well today. Uh, this uh, this lecture coming up here is the the post World War One. I, I mean, immediately following World War One, uh, with the peace deal, the Treaty of Versailles. What what takes place with that? We're not going to spend a lot of time on uh, on this because I do want to get into uh, the interwar years. Um, you know, for for next time. Uh, but we do need to look at this because it's set, it really what takes place at Versailles is so important, what sets up the bitterness in Germany when it starts leading into uh, the Second World War. Uh, so we're going to be looking today uh, um, at that. Okay, class, this is our lecture PowerPoint on the First World War, Part 3. And this will be our final PowerPoint before we move on into... Um, the post World War One, the interwar years before World War Two. So we'll be um, looking at that next time. But for now, First World War Part Three. So the armistice was uh, declared and and signed, so that it went into effect on November 11th of 1918 at 11 a.m. and that brought World War One to a close. Uh, but then they actually had to have a treaty to end the war. So it ended November 11, 1918, but the Treaty of Versailles was signed on June 28, 1919. And this uh, officially ended the First World War. And this was signed in Paris. But the Treaty of Versailles was... Um, was really a setup for the problems of the interwar years. And so a lot of the problems that lead to World War II can be traced back to the Treaty of Versailles. So just a couple of points for the Treaty of Versailles. It was negotiated with little input, that's supposed to be input, um, with, with Germany. And that's that's a big problem because so you have the winners of the war basically outlining what's going to take place uh, to Germany, and it, it's really it's really bad for Germany. The Treaty of Versailles had 15 parts and 440 articles that did all kinds of things to Germany, and um, it it reassigned basically it reassigned the borders and laid a plan for war reparations which again is going to be for a punishment of Germany. It, in the um, Treaty of Versailles, it caused uh, a humiliating, uh, immediate humiliation and economic ruin for Germany. Not only was Germany um, already in shambles because it lost the war and lost you know, so many men and their economy was shot, um, and they lost, it actually just kind of like rubbed salt in the wound um, and humiliated Germany even more. Their war reparation was a huge sum of 6.6 .6 billion pounds uh, to pay Germany, uh, that, that payment that Germany had to pay, uh, mainly to France, mainly to rebuild France. And if they, if they followed uh, whatever payment plan that was set up, it would have taken all uh, taken them so many years to pay it back. Uh, I believe there was one estimate I read one time that it would take them to like 1990. It take them like you know like 80 years to pay this amount back. So it was just ridiculous how they punished Germany with this. Um, Alsace Lorraine was given back to France. Uh, there was um, punitive military limitations on the German uh, military, so they can only have a certain number of men in the military certain number of airplanes and, and all of that. And then one of the big issues that definitely would lead to the Second World War was what is called the War Guilt Clause. And in the Treaty of Versailles, the War Guilt Clause made Germany accept all blame for World War I. So they, they basically, when they signed it, they basically were signing saying that everything that happened was our fault. And, and that caused a big problem with... Germany during the interwar years because it wasn't all just their fault and and they they really kind of that really st stuck to them and they they really hated that that was the Treaty of Versailles uh, next we're going to talk about is Wilson's 14 points 
Uh, before the war ended in January of 1918, January 8th of 1918, President Wilson presented to joint session of Congress his 14 points. And he basically was outlining a vision that would create a stable and long-lasting peace in Europe. So the um, United States had joined the war, but then how, how is it that we're going to bring together peace in Europe and, and have that peace last? Well, most Europeans, i.e. the Allies, they viewed this 14 points as simplistic and really didn't listen to it too much. Uh, the French Prime Minister actually mocked it that that man could not keep God's Ten Commandments, so how in the world is, are they going to keep Wilson's 14 points? So really, it wasn't really even listened to. You, we're not going to worry too much about it, um, except a couple of things. In December of 1918, so this is after the war had ended, the armistice had taken place, Wilson went to Europe, but very little of the 14 points were listened to, except one. And that is the League of Nations. As part of the 14 points, Wilson developed this idea that a League of Nations was needed to prevent future wars. And so the League of Nations was an organization to prevent future wars, and it, was, um, it came together in 1919. It was formed by the victorious powers, and it was an attempt to enforce the Treaty of Versailles. Now, what their plan was, it was, to, it was intended to replace secret deals and maybe even wars when an issue arose between countries in Europe. And so the way that they would enforce the Treaty of Versailles and, and keep countries from warring was basically the League of Nations would spearhead disarmament of countries, limit the size of militaries, use collective scrutiny to put pressure on an aggressive nation. So if a, if a nation becomes kind of aggressive, the League of Nations would come together and, and kind of scrutinize that aggressive nation and kind of force them through pressure to, to back down. Uh, maybe through negotiations, they could stop some of these things. So it was, this, it was kind of a good idea. These nations would come together and stop aggression. But it failed because obviously in 1939, Europe was plunged into the Second World War. And one of the ironic things is that America never joined the League of Nations because America wanted to stay out of European affairs. Um, another interesting thing is point number 10. Point number 10 of Wilson's 14 points involved redrawing Eastern Europe along ethnic and racial lines. And this would call um, for self-determination of some countries and, and, and new countries. Countries that were very small, countries that were redrawn. The map was redrawn again uh, along ethnicities. It would create buffer countries between Germany and, and uh, Russia and Germany and, and the, um, uh, Turkey, all of that. They would create these new countries. It created the country of Poland, which would be a big sticking point in the interwar years. So you have these buffer countries being redrawn. The issue is that when you redraw lines on a map, especially along ethnic lines, you're not going to get everybody in there. So you're not going to get all of one ethnicity in this country and all of one ethnicity of that country. These ethnicities are going to overlap in regard to geography. And so when you just draw a line across the map, you're going to include some other ethnicities or even religions in another country. And this is going to cause major problems for World War, at the beginning of World War II. So, for example, when Hitler annexes the Sudetenland, that is because the Sudetenland was an area of Czechoslovakia that had ethnic Germans in it. And so Hitler wanted these Germans to be part of Germany, but they lived in part of Czechoslovakia called the Sudetenland, and so Hitler goes and takes the Sudetenland. So it's just that this redrawing of lines on maps is never a good idea. Also, 
the creation of Poland would cause a big issue because Poland would need a seaport that was given to Poland. Well, that would divide part of Germany, and I'm going to show you that in a second. This is pre-World War I countries. You can see United Kingdom, France, Russia. Okay. You then have the central powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, down here is Turkey. Again, uh, Italy was actually part of the central powers, but they joined the triple Entente. They joined the Allies later in the war. They weren't too, they weren't too involved in the war except maybe up here in the Alps. Okay, there, Italy will definitely become more involved with war too. So you see pre World War One countries there. Now look at this. Post World War One countries. So you have United Kingdom, you have France, you have Italy, Switzerland, but now you start seeing the redrawing. Of, of things. And so you have Yugoslavia drawn. And that's going to cause issues because you have Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Macedonia. It, they're in here and and this is not this is not good because there's a lot of different ethnicities in here. You have Hungary as a now as its own country. You have li a little tiny Austria is its own country. You have a Czechoslovakia, which is its own country, which again, like I said, during World War II, beginning of World War II, part of Czechoslovakia is called the Sudetenland. That's like right in here that borders Germany. Well, Hitler takes that because these are ethnic Germans in here. You have the creation of Poland. And what I had mentioned earlier was you have Germany after World War I, which is called Weimar Germany. Weimar. You have Germany here, which extends all the way up to here. But because of the creation of Poland, they give this little tiny piece of land to Poland so that it can have a seaport up here in the North Sea. Now this here is called the Danzig Corridor because it goes to the city of Danzig. Now, Danzig is German, so it's right here. Now, it's a city within the corridor, so you have this corridor cutting off this part of Germany, this part here, and that is going to be a big issue for the Germans at the beginning of World War One. Uh, excuse me, World War Two. Big issue right here because they want to connect this. You have these other countries then also created. At the beginning of World War II, when Hitler invades Poland, he strikes a deal with Russia. Russia is going to invade all these countries and invade this half of Poland. So we'll get to that later in World War II. But it's just when you start just redrawing the maps of things, it just causes all kinds of problems. And that's it for this uh, PowerPoint lecture. See you in a second. Okay, hey class, that's going to be it for uh, this PowerPoint. Uh, not very long. I just wanted to hit you know the, the important things of the um, immediately following World War One and what's going to be taking taking them into the interwar years, uh, the the time period between World War One and World War Two. So I just I wanted to focus in on you know, the League of Nations, Wilson's fourteen points, and and uh, and all of that. Uh, it's so important uh, because it really sets the stage for what's going to be taking place with the bitterness with Germany um, and and how they were being treated. They got very upset about this, and that's what really fueled a lot of the um, the sentiment that Hitler and the Nazis had towards, especially towards France and um, and Russia and all of that. So it, it's just a, a really important uh, time period. Uh, we're going to be moving next time into the interwar years and looking at that. Um, you know, Weimar Germany was a democracy, so you know Germany fell in 19, the Second Reich fell in 1918 when when Germany lost the war. So it went from an emperor to it actually went to a democracy, uh, which was called Weimar Germany, and they had several governments, and it just it it really became a real big mess. Uh, but during that time, uh, Germany Germans were really suffering. 
And so um, they, they needed a, a focal point. They needed someone to really bring them out of this suffering. And again, the world was having a problem because of the Depression and, and all of that. But Germany really needed someone to kind of um, polarize to and draw them out of this, this suffering and the, um, the humiliation of the defeat and, and all of that. And that, that person actually was Adolf Hitler. He's the one that drew them out of this. So we'll be looking at um, uh, the war interperiod between the wars, interwar years. We'll be looking at that next time. Other than that, I hope you guys are uh, doing well. Keep up on your reading. Keep up on your studies, especially now um, with uh, everything being online uh, for the remaining of uh, the next couple weeks anyway, possibly the remaining of the semester. Uh, Keep up on it, uh, on the videos. And uh, other than that, hope you guys have a great day. Take care.